This is a new front in Russia's Ukrainian war. Emergency workers battling flames caused by airstrikes on the central city of Dnipro. Ukrainian officials say an apartment building, a kindergarten and a two-story shoe factory were targeted and destroyed, causing casualties. To the west, in the Ukrainian city of Lutsk, just 70 miles from NATO ally Poland, a strategic airfield also came under attack. With the invasion now in its third week, Russia appears to be widening its assault. And there are concerns of escalation too. Russian state television has been broadcasting these images of fighters from Syria said to be volunteering to join the fight on Russia's side. The Kremlin backs the Syrian regime of Bashar al-Assad and the scenes appeared shortly after Putin told his Security Council that foreign fighters should be invited to join in. So if you see people who want voluntarily, without payment, to come and help people living in Donbas, well, we need to meet their efforts and help them to reach the combat zone. These are thugs from Syria, said President Zelensky of Ukraine. From the country destroyed in the same way, the occupiers are destroying us, he said. Later, at a Kremlin meeting with his Belarusian ally, President Putin struck a different, upbeat tone, saying he'd been informed of certain positive shifts in recent negotiations with Ukraine though it remains unclear what those positive shifts could be. But they don't seem to be diverting Russia from its invasion course. New satellite images suggest a massive Russian military column north of the capital, Kiev, has now dispersed, with some elements repositioned into forests and countryside around the capital. And these are the latest images from the besieged Ukrainian town of Volnavaka in the country's southeast. Russian troops moving through the streets, which are now reported to be under their full control. Bit by bit, Ukraine, it seems, is being overrun. Matthew Chance, CNN, Kyiv. Russian officials say that they, their forces are now some 15 miles from Kyiv, from Kyiv, slowly moving in the outskirts. What do you make of the security situation right now in Kyiv? Do you believe Kyiv can be encircled by Russian forces? Do they have the capabilities? Look, I'm in Kyiv, in the center of Kyiv. And you are right, maybe in a 15 miles, we have a Russian tanks. But they are not moving because Ukrainian armed forces stopped them. And that during the last seven days, they cannot move one single meter ahead. But we have less and less ammunition. And we do not allow, we are not giving up. We are not forgive the Putin these type of things. And I am absolutely confident that we will fight in every single house, every single street and every single quarter in Kiev, in Kharkiv, in Chernigov, in... Uh, all of the cities would be the hell for the Russian soldiers and would be at the end of the day the hell for Putin. And with this situation, just the more you uh, help us to increase the effectiveness of Ukrainian armed forces, the weaker would be Putin. And this is why the security of the whole world, security of US, security of EU and security of NATO would be higher. Please, we need to be united the same way like Putin do three mistakes. Mistake number one, he overestimate his army. And we Ukrainian armed forces demonstrate that. And I'm proud that me as a president create this army in the year 2014. Point number two, he underestimate Ukrainian armed forces. And point number three, he underestimate unity of Ukrainian that he cannot blow up, cannot uh, break our unity. And he underestimated the unity of the whole world. Because after the 24th of February, the transatlantic unity, European unity, unity of the whole world, demonstrating during the General Assembly of the uh, United Nations, when only five nations support Russia, Syria to North Korea, and this is the basis of yeah. their support and 141 nation support Ukraine. And Ukraine now uh, 
providing the beginning, the end of the Russian Empire. 